Okay, okay folks, let's get, let's get started. We've got a couple of guests here. Uh, as usual, uh, we've got politicians over here talking to uh, Wes Howard, already ripped up, ready to go. They didn't need a script this morning. And we want to welcome everyone. We have some special guests here. We've got Suzanne Moore back with us again. Uh, hello, everybody. Say, say hello to America. Hello, America. Hello. hello. And, and, and we'll also have we'll honored guests. Oh, we've got some Michael Holcomb, BD Bonners. Okay. Debbie Hicks. Debbie. She's with We the People Aiken. Hi, Debbie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And, you know, I'll say this, Rob. If you're coming through South Carolina, please come by and visit us here at the Casey Mafia, nonpartisan group. And it's an eclectic mix of folks. And we're not having any uh, special speakers today, but Wes has to show up, so I want to make an opportunity to give himself a few words. But also, our star attraction, as always, is Mr. Belton Gettings, author. Uh, about, he'll talk to you about whiskey steels. And uh, a song I've never heard of, but I think uh, Roxanne Wilson, who is the wife of of Joe Wilson, no, the, mother of and the mother of Alan Wilson. She made that real clear. <laughs> <laughs> with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alan's, Alan's been here a couple times. Isn't he cute? A couple of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago. And we've got the Honorable David James, a former county councilman. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got Howard Shepard, past president of the South Carolina Railroad Museum. Eddie McCain, running for a district with 39. 39. Al Denton retired Army. Air Force. Air, sorry, Air Force. <laughs> Air Force. Well, I'm Army. All right. All right. It, it is, it is Army. Army. Yeah. And we got most influential uh, patriot, uh, patriot person. Patriot person. Patriot person. Patriot person. He's a patriot uh, person. Albert Black. The biggest troublemaker award winner from a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, and let's see. The person over here in the script is Paul Graham. Really good writer. <clears throat> But, but Corey, Corey Norris <laughs> won the Troublemaker Award. Now, this guy here is not with us yet. He's supposed to be here, Bill West. Oh, yeah, West. Bill, we want you here in real life. And he's not here yet. Bill or something. So, uh, let, let's, let's, Mr. Giddens is going to take over. And after he gets through, West, if you want to stand up and say a few words, feel free to. All right. <coughs> Mr. Giddens, you have to. <laughs> Always cut a little food before we start this thing, kind of get your head straightened out. <laughs> Take your mind off the serious stuff that's going on. Up. Like uh, politics. And I passed out some things. Some of y'all didn't get one, but you can look home with somebody else. I ain't got no more pockets. But uh, some of you remember this. Lady over here. Uh, I was thinking, uh, in this political time that we're in, you know, uh, you, uh, we, we all read the religious people. Mr. Gates, Don Humphrey, the famous author, just came in, got a, hopefully a best-selling well, book coming comes in. in. Another <laughs> author. And Don, good morning. Well, right, sorry, Mr. Gates. Sorry, I'm late. But I thought about um, when you when you're in a, in a contest, for instance, I used to play football. We get on the field, we'd have a little oh, pray. But we didn't have a pray. You know, God help us beat the other team. Uh, we had a, a, a coach who was uh, uh, very deeply religious and, and taught me a lot of things. And one thing he taught me to do is, uh, you know, pray for both teams. And uh, with all the politics and stuff that's going on, I think we need to pray for both candidates and pray, uh, ask God, uh, you know, to help us come out with somebody that's going to be good because we have no idea how this thing will come out. But it got me thinking, and I. I had this uh, thing about preaching the bear. And some of you might have heard it back over the years. And uh, if you haven't, look over there and sort of hum it along with me. I'll sing the first chorus. We ain't going to sing this whole thing. Oh, but the whole thing is. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that old preacher gets up in the morning. You know, y'all have never thought about it. I tell you what, one of the things that I like to tell people about is the old preacher. I've had a lot of friends over the years who was preachers. And preachers is, is, is uh, a whole different people. They, they travel on a different plane on the celestial earth than what most of us do. And when y'all get a problem, you, you never thought about this, but think about it. You get a problem and something burdening you in, in your life, you know, you go to the preacher and you tell the preacher all about it. The preacher says, oh yeah, the Lord's going to bless you, you know, and he relieves you of your pain. You know, you ever think about it, the preacher gets a problem, he ain't got nobody to go to. Except up there. 
I'll tell y'all a story about that sometime. Old Pinewood preacher down there where I come from, he was bratted than the average preacher, and he uh, had an idea one time since they didn't have nobody to confess. Confession's good for the soul, you know. That's the reason they employ it in religion. And uh, But the preacher ain't got nobody to go and confess to. And so uh, that old Pinewood preacher being brighter than the average preacher, he got together with, and so he said, I get some of my friends together, we'll confess to each other. And I'll tell y'all that story if you have another time. <laughs> it's really good. But anyway, this is preaching the bell. And uh, early in the morning, the preacher gets up before he goes to do his sermon. Usually he'll go out and take a little stroll and relax and think about his message or whatever. Well, this is kind of a play on that. The preacher, uh, it's kind of just a chant. Well, the preacher went out walking. It was early one Sunday morning. The Lord flew against his religion. He took his gun along. Shot a few birds and he even shot a hare. But on the way back home, he met with a great big grizzly bear. They sit down in the middle of the road. He wasn't showing no love. Preacher saw he wasn't going nowhere, so he cast his eyes above. He said, Now, Lord, you deliver Daniel from the lion's den, John from the belly of the whale, and them, the good book do declare. Now, good Lord, if you can't help me, please don't help that down. <laughs> so maybe we need to pray. Well, that's a hard act to follow. I know. 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 I did we go to the same camp? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're on the list. Okay. Well, everybody pretty much knows me here. My name is Wes Howard. I'm candidate for Lexington County Council in District 3, which is the main town of Lexington. Uh, I'll go out to Cox Ferry on the west and bordering North uh, Lake Drive, and then it meanders across Main Street on the backside of Harmon Street. Uh, I'm running to return a voice of common sense conservatism to our county council. Uh, we, we have a county council that is has nine Republican seats on it, and uh, they seem to be more concerned with things about how we plant our trees and cut our grass, and uh, spending $110,000 on, on trees around the admin building when they, they're not properly funding our SWAT team, and we have private citizens that have to do fundraisers for our SWAT team, which is absolutely the awesome thing that they're willing to do. But then you also have them seemingly more concerned about spending money on, you know, seven eight hundred dollars for water and beverage service and golf umbrellas and uh, liquor decanters and leather bound portfolios. Uh, and then we have issues that happened last year with Amazon. Um, it, it just it, it's almost as if they, they live in a parallel universe versus the real Lexington County where our moms and dads and small business owners have to operate every day. Uh, they, they're constantly looking on, on ways to spend our money and uh, increase our taxes. And a lot of the things, if, if you pay attention, that they're doing with our public safety, which is indeed the, the bulk of the budget. Uh, just recently, they took almost $10 million worth of fire trucks out of the firehouses, which indeed does make you and your family less safe. And in the same year, they raised your taxes. So what they're doing is they're basically making you and your families less safe, and they're charging you more money to do that. Uh, to me, that's not common sense, nor is it conservative, nor is it pro-family, nor is it pro-small business. Um, I absolutely am somebody that believes that we need less regulation. Um, I'm, I'm not about uh, getting into office and, and seeing how many ordinances I can pass. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about two things. What are my actions in office going to do to our families first? What are they going to do to our small businesses second? Um, every time that any government entity takes more of our families and our small businesses' money, that means that we have less. 
That means that we have less freedom to make choices with our family, with our children's college funds, with any money that you may be setting aside for retirement, with anything that you may be thinking about doing to expand your business and to grow your business. I'm interested in trying to do the best that we can do to help those that create jobs and generate wealth do that and do it better. And I'm of the belief that when government gets out of the way, everybody in Lexington County will be better for it. I'm not somebody that's interested in passing an ordinance telling you where to plant your trees and how to cut your grass and having a criminal penalty along with that. I, I think that we need to have a new focus in County Council. Uh, a lot of folks have been up there for a long time. Uh, everybody that I've, I've dealt with on County Council has been absolutely nice to me. They've placated me, but they've continued to do what they've done for years and years and years, which is to blow out the budget, increase our taxes, and do things like buying the dangerous ambulances, taking the fire trucks out of the firehouses, and by the way, they have a plan to hire 75 more firefighters over five years. And at the end of those five years, I feel fairly certain the folks on council are going to expect each and every one of us to buy brand new shiny fire trucks, and they'll expect us to pay full retail for that. Now, that brings my question to my mind, why did they buy the $10 million for the fire trucks to begin with if they didn't need them? And guess who they're going to expect to foot the bill? Us. I don't believe that that's appropriate. I don't believe that that's pro-family. I don't believe that that's pro-business. And it's time that we had somebody that's willing to say, no, let's stop. It's time that we had somebody that understands how our public safety works, how it functions on the street, what our sheriff's deputies, firefighters, and paramedics need, and what they don't need. There's not a person on county council that has my experience. I had over 10 years of experience of being a paramedic and being on special tactical teams. I'm a former member of the Lexington County Cobra team. And I understand the response that will happen when somebody dies 911. And that's an incredibly <coughs> expensive response. Now, does that keep us safe generally? Yes. But are they doing things that absolutely do not make sense? <coughs> yes. And unlike every other candidate, that's running for the District 3 seat, I'm putting my money where my mouth is because I am literally going to have to sacrifice my career with the county. And I absolutely love being a medic. I love serving my county. I love serving you and your families. That may sound corny, but I plead guilty because that's just who I am. I'm passionate about our county, and I'm passionate about making sure that everybody in Lexington County has opportunities to succeed and to grow. And I do not believe that the answer to that success and that growth lies in governmental direction. I believe that it lies at the hands of our moms and our dads and our small business owners that wake up every day without somebody on county council calling them and telling them to get up and go to work. They know when they need to cut the grass. They know when they need to plant the trees. But a lot of us don't know about the gross waste that takes place in all these different departments. And that's because of their behavioral counsel. I think that it's time, from every small business owner that I've talked to, that we had a voice of common sense conservatism. And somebody that's willing to say no. Somebody that's willing to say, guess what? You're asking us to do something that's going to put a, a greater burden on our families and our small businesses. And obviously, there's not somebody on council that's willing to do that, but I am. And that's exactly why I'm running. Because for so long, and many of you in this room know, because you tried to deal with county council just as I have, in private, not trying to embarrass our county. And Lord knows we all know there's lots of politicians from Lexington County that do a good job of embarrassing us. Uh, so we, don't, we don't need to, to help that along. But when we try to deal with them in private, and we try to talk with them, and we try to reason with them, They'll placate us, and then they'll go right on and do what they want to do. And I'm not one of those folks that need to be watched. I'm not one of those folks that need to be called. I'm a conservative. I've always been a conservative. I've always been involved in conservative politics since I was in high school. I understand that the basis of our society is our family. And the growth of that is our small businesses that generate wealth and that employ people. The small business community in Lexington County is indeed the backbone of our economy. 
It's not the Michelins and the Amazons and the U.S. Foods. Now, I want them here, absolutely. I love the jobs. I love the wealth that they create. But they are indeed a small fraction of our economic wealth and our economic growth in our county. And that's why I understand that we need a county council that's focused on doing everything that they can to help our small businesses and to help our families. And increasing our taxes in the worst economy since the Great Depression is not how you help our families, in my own opinion. It's not how you help our small businesses, in my own opinion. And that's why I'm running. And I sincerely hope I can count on your support. I can count on your vote if you live in District 3. I don't know how many, how many of you live in here. I see some faces that I know where you live in. If you're not in my district, um, there's one. I know I've got his support already. But and we got your yard sign coming, by the way. Thanks, sir. But um, that's, that's the end of my little speech. Is there any questions? Anybody would like to share any ideas with me? Those of you that are residents of our county? Who's our town council? I live in Casey. I, that that Todd, young man Todd, would know. Todd Cole. Who? Oh, you're, I thought he said Todd, town. Todd, Todd your county Cole. councilman is Todd Cole. And I don't believe he's up this time. his council. Yeah. Okay, I know it's Steve, but I mean Todd County. Lexington County. Lexington County. Yeah. Todd Cullen. Todd Cullen. Yes, sir. I believe he's part of the body shop, I believe. That's right. And he is not up for election this time, I don't think. Yeah. He's up next time. In two years. What incentives would yes. you uh, use to, uh, to bring the businesses downtown? I see a lot of empty, empty buildings. And that's, uh, that's mostly... Uh, uh, mayor town issue, and of course, you know the Lexington mayor is uh, the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. What, what can the county do to help that? Well, one thing the county can do is to cut the taxes and cut the regulation. There's a lot of regulations um, that they have that aren't ordinances, and I'm sure Mr. James could fill you in on that better than I could. But there's a lot of things that they could do to open up the doors, as it were, for folks investing. Uh, you have that empty lot on town. Uh, Main Street, and the folks that own that are trying to sell it and get rid of it because it's an absolute loss. Um, definitely, that would be a, a county town partnership that would need to take place. Um, I don't necessarily believe that we need to take millions of dollars of our tax money and invest to attract people there. I think there's lots that we could do to, to back off the regulatory fence, as it were, because that's actually what it is. It's a burden and it's a blockade to economic development to have folks come back downtown. So and part of that is traffic, to be, to be honest with you. So get the county to work with the city for tax incentives to promote business in the area to do the same road. I mean, that's pretty much all we can do. Well, not necessarily. There's a lot of things that, that you have to deal with the state, too, as far as the regulations um, setting up, depending on what type of business you, that you have. On what you can do. Just yes, sir. That, that is a need. Yes. Yes. Who holds that seat now? Uh, Smokey Davis, and he's retiring. So it's, yes, open, it's going to be an open seat. Yes, ma'am. And I, as far as I know, it's myself and another gentleman by the name of Scott Adams. That's the only two that I know that are um, officially running. The month is not over with yet. Yeah. More than Mary. Water's fine. Jump really on in. Well, good luck to you. I'm, I'm ju I just miss being in your district by maybe a street. So but you can still help me. But it's, I need it's, all the help it, I can get. It's, I'm very nice, you. it's very nice to put a face with a name, so I'm glad. Yes, I, I'm glad I, I, I met you ladies at the American Legion Hut one night, actually. Really? Yes, yes. Y'all were gossiping about Joe. I was out front with uh, Mr. Van Ross. I'm certain that couldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even more girls. <laughs> one more question, Tim. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, what we're looking at, everything's a business. Okay, so you're looking at the police department, the sheriff's department as a business. What you do is you cut the overhead down. Why can't we do a merger? Because we have duplication of the effort. I've been stopped in Lexington Down City by the sheriff's department. So theoretically, then you have the highway patrol. So everybody, three of them, are actually looking and trying to, I guess you say, maintain laws and order. Um, good answer right here, it's called money. But anyway, what we're looking at, well, how can you go to merge? Unfortunately, that, that's where a lot of your, your answers lie. But we, we, need, we need to answer. stop at that point, though, and look at reality and start merging some of these things to cut our cost. Yep. Sure. And that, that, that's part of my view, too, is, is that we, we need folks who are willing to look outside the box, mm -hmm. not just take the, the, the blanket answers that are given to us by other bureaucrats from the state or federal agencies. Um, I'm absolutely not averse to that. There's also a lot of savings that we could do in merging the EMS and the fire 
and a lot of the coverage areas. I mean, there, there's waste in every department in the county. There's, there's no doubt in my mind as I've read the budget. And at this point, the economic, I guess, the downturn that we have, we've got to look at the basics. When you can do something that's uh, half the cost, get the same results, we've got to start doing that now. We're past the point of what we've been in the past. The well, it's just not there. Part, part, of, part of what I was talking about earlier, about having, having the government and the regulations uh, removed as the, the economic fence that it indeed is, is reviewing the budget. Having an online, penny by penny, live registry, where if you spend the money, scan the receipt and it's online. And I, I really believe a lot of the waste of spending would stop because I don't believe that the folks on county council are going to want to be answering for some of the department heads who are spending money on the things that they're spending. And when the public finds out about it, and they're, they're saying, you know, we're living through the worst economy in 100 years, and they're spending money on this. Uh, I mean, and it's being spent. Lobbyists, I mean, I can go on down the line and fail Columbia bus system. That They won't open the books to our county council, by the way. But they just want their money. See, South Carolina <coughs> Gas Company was supposed to provide transportation by being a monopoly to provide electricity for the city. Yes, sir. We've had that why conversation. Not, why they let them get out of that, I don't know. <coughs> and it, it's not just Lexington County. I mean, they're, they're, they're just reaching out trying to get as much money as they can and expecting us to foot the bill for two routes. Well, if Eddie uh, asked for a 15 second answer on some question. <laughs> 15 seconds. <laughs> I'll make you do 15 seconds an hour and 10. How about that? Not, not just two quick things, man. Lexington County is not very business friendly. No, sir. Just two quick examples here. Out here in my campaign, he's a part of my campaign covers Western Lexington County. Uh, there's a man that I met, he owns a 66 station, not too far from the Lexington County, Slew County line. He told me he'll never build another business in Lexington County. He owns two stations in Aiken County and one in Saluda, and he's fixing to build another one in Saluda. He said, forget Lexington County. Too high taxes, too many regulations. I met a guy not too far from the Jakey Knox Bridge where he uh, started an internet cafe business, and he's going to sell ice cream and hot dogs and that type of thing, right? Lady from the county, I guess it's DHEC, came in, said, won't approve this until you build a grease pit. He looked at her and said, I'm not frying or cooking anything. I've just got hot dogs, ice cream, cakes, candies. She says, what part of what I just told you do you not understand? <laughs> you, before you can open up this business, you've got to put in a grease pit. He again said, can you show me in the regulation? Because I'm not cooking. I'm not frying. I just got hot dogs, and the hot dogs are already cooked. You know, when you buy them, you can eat them out of the pack. Um, and ice cream, and Hostess, and Little Debbie cakes. You gotta have a grease pit. Or you can't open up this establishment. That's the kind of stuff business people are looking at. It's making it almost impossible to even go into business. Yeah. And when we got an economy now where we're going to export all our manufacturing jobs to third world countries, so now you want to encourage people to at least be able to go out and start your own business. Kids can't even open up lemonade stands in neighborhoods anymore without the police coming and shutting them down because they're so concerned about where the lemons come from. You know, this guy here will start a business and they say, no, you can't have one unless you go to all the expense of digging a, di a, a grease trap or a, a grease pit for a guy that's not even frying food. So we're not business friendly. I, I think the DHEC regulations are statewide because I had actually looked at Oh, yeah. Doing a canning business. Okay. What business? Canning. Like canning jellies and jams yeah. and radishes. Yeah. To do that, you have to follow the same regs as opening a restaurant. You know, so, so what's the issue? Shameful. In, in theory, what we're doing, all, all in the name of so-called security, we're taking away people's freedom to earn a living. Unless you're Amazon, then they just build it for you. Yeah. I mean, you 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 have a you have a right to eat and to have a house, and, and Therefore, you have a right to earn money to pay for those. And when the government comes up here and says, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, then they're taking away your, your liberty and your freedom to be able to earn income. That's, that's, that's beyond, beyond crazy. You know? and I, I, I'm, All in the name of safety. You know, well, it won't take but two or three people eating something that makes them sick for that guy to go out of business. You don't, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I think a lot of that's going to be in your purview when you get in the house, though, a lot less in mine. But there are indeed things that inhibit business development in Lexington County, and most of it affects 
the small business community. It's not the big Amazon deals or the mission yeah. deals. Let's give Wes a hand, folks. Okay, please do. Under equal opportunity, uh, everyone gets an opportunity. That we have no guest speakers, but before I ask the next person who wants to speak, come up. Um, I'd like to recognize D.I. Blackwell. He uh, was a retired investigator from the city of Casey. He was working for the Sheriff's Department now. D.I. makes the best apple uh, jelly anybody that I've ever, missed the best I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 <laughs> not, 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 not a business Not if D.I. has something to say about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't yeah. 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 sell it commercially, do you? No, I give it away. Give it away. Give it away for a donation, right? You got a business license? We'll investigate him. Yeah, I also uh, made, uh, let's see, who's that famous Lakes car driver? He made a pen. Custom Richard Petty. Richard Petty. It's, it's in his museum. He made a custom yeah, pen out of the wood from the old racetrack up here uh, at the Columbia Racetrack. So it's a lot of history. DI is involved in all of them. Uh, uh, and DI uh, was a, in the lead cutting edge on technology at the, at the police department in Casey, and he's now the sheriff's department. But, uh, yeah, what's that? You got your hand there. This is a pen made from the wood from the olive tree from uh, Bethlehem, oh. Holy Land. Oh. All right, let me just show it. All right, America. Another incentive to come to the <laughs> Casey Mafia <laughs> here and visit Midlands and South Carolina. Oh, from Bethlehem. Pass that around. You never know what will happen. I, you know, wasn't okay. sure. D.I. I knew was coming this morning, but uh, the first time I met D.I., there was a break-in <laughs> break at my house, and uh, Actually, I, I don't want to say I held the guy. I, I asked him to stay still. <laughs> uh, but D.I. And, and the police force came around. That's the first time I met D.I. So there's a reason we have police, and it's a good reason for security. Uh, and D.I., I want to thank you for that from years ago. Um, anyway, who would like to speak next? And, and you know, uh, remember your comments are your responsibility. So when you stand up here, it's your responsibility, whatever you say. Who, who's the next person? TV. Next, any other candidate want to speak? Uh, Eddie, you want to say anything? I don't want to. Don't want I to just vote. Suzanne, you I'd like to invite everybody to come to Joe's campaign headquarters opening next Friday at 10 o'clock at 636. Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson. <laughs> um, headquarters opening next Friday. Don't get me on. I had it all together. 6:36 Sunset Drive. Oh, no. um, oh, at 10 o'clock next Friday. Okay. 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 Suzanne, you want to say anything? Well, we can we can leave here and go over there. And you gonna have food there too? No, this Joe's office right across the room over there. Yeah, just as you come up the hill. Uh -huh. yeah, I, the same day. place he's had it for years. Yeah. Well, three years. No, the, the only thing I'd like to say is it's, it, thank you very much for your warm welcome. Sure. Come back anytime, sure. and, and I think it's uh, lovely to be uh, well, and, be and, and, and welcome. So thank you all for making me feel welcome. And Mr. Gaddis, Mr. Gaddis. He's on all the show with him. Yes. She's, she's well, thanking you. Remember the letter she sent? Remember the letter? Yes, I told him about it. And I oh, had him. Oh. He read your letter out loud. Oh, he wanted to know why you wrote me and him. I said, Hey, I'm a middle aged sex <laughs> Now, I told you not to repeat what was in that letter. <laughs> That's the dangerous thing about uh, having all this stuff on video. <laughs> they take that clip out of context. Don't tell them that. Did you want to get up saying Oh, I was just going to um, give an update. I'll move around. Outside, yeah, I'm going to put it in time for five minutes, just in case. Because <laughs> last time I spoke for 25 minutes, so this is just an update. I thought you guys would like to, to know how my uh, race for Senate uh, District 26 has been going. Um, when I was here and I was caught on camera a few, uh, well, I guess about two months ago now, I talked about one of my uh, issues that I would like to see passed uh, at once I was elected and that was for the other fund to go away. The 8.2 billion in fines and fees, and it made no mistake, fines and fees are taxes. I'm going to change the lexicon once I get there. We won't have fines and fees, they'll just be taxes, they're all taxes. But the 8.2 billion in fines and fees, what I wanted was for that fund, which is called other, and I like to call it slush, and Mr. Setzler sits on the other fund oversight committee, 
I wanted those funds to move into the general fund where they're subject to transparency, up and down recorded votes, and state spending caps. Mr. Setzler's been in the Senate for 36 years. He's been sitting on this committee. He knew the other fund existed, and about three weeks ago, he introduced my issue as legislation. Hey, see that? So, that makes me the most effective unelected senator <laughs> in the history of South Carolina. And I love how I can force Mr. Setzler's hand on the record, hello Nikki Setzler, to do the right thing. You should have been doing it when no one was watching. Amen. Thank you. All right. I would like to make a motion that we call it extortion instead of taxation. Well, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the interesting yeah. thing about this forum is you never know what you'll hear up here, but uh, everybody has the right to I'm in a situation now where I can't agree too much with one side or the other. I get in trouble, but it, as y'all know. So I've got to say, uh, okay, who's next? Anyone else want to say anything? Hey. Is there any questions for me today? Paul, 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 come on up, Paul. No, Paul, great. Come on. Yes, Paul. Just go ahead and see me. Paul, 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 If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to, 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 to answer them. What, what's your recipe for illegal bath salts? That, that is top secret. <laughs> that is a, that is a, that's a trade secret. He can tell you, but then he'd have to tell you. That's a trade secret. Pal, do you have an update and the updates? No. no. I'm not quite as hungry as I was. What has happened with Senate Bill? Oh, we just had the Thanks for coming. Good. See y'all next week. Good. I think so.